I'm on my way to the grocery store. I'm gonna do a beer today that's only, only grocery store purchased items. Normally, beer is made with water, barley, hops, and yeast. I'm doing water, barley, yeast, and other things because there's no hops at the grocery store. I'm gonna do a bay leaf in my bittering edition, which is like essentially, you know, make it that bittering flavor that beer has. And to flavor it, I'm gonna use black tea and coriander. I'll get into why later. Uh, and they do have grain at the store. I'm going to Whole Foods markets. I need the grain to convert, to get sugars that the yeast can eat later. I'm gonna buy baker's yeast because that's all they have there. It's not the quite the right strain of yeast I should be using to make beer with, but it's all they have at the store. So it's better than nothing. So yeah, let's see, let's see what I can do here. Let's see what I can cobble up and put together and I'll go through the process after I buy all the ingredients. <laughs> I got the spelt and the soft white wheat, a pound each. I need to find wheat germs, it has enzymes that I need. So I'm gonna hunt for that right now. They don't have wheat germ, that's a problem. Committed to doing this entirely at the grocery store, so I don't know a substitute. I need the enzymes in the wheat germ to convert this mash. You see, the mash needs enzymes, and the enzymes convert that starches into sugar. The malt I'm using is doesn't have enough. You can buy ones that have converted and have the enzymes that you need, but I have dozen. So this could be interesting. This could get weird. The whole thing's already weird, though. All right, now I need baker's yeast. I'm gonna have to hop this somehow. So I'm gonna use bay leaves, which I have at home. I think I had this at home. That's the only variable. I'm not sure. I might have to go out again. It's gonna be really annoying. I found it. Do I need something to ferment this in? I already had this, but they do sell one gallon jugs of apple juice. Get one of those emptied out, finish it, transfer it, and ferment in one of these. Okay, got what I need. Let's get out of here. I have some, I have some. I normally brew outside, but I'm gonna do it like, imagine if you had no brew equipment at all. You just wanna make some grocery store beer. This is the real deal here right now. So, just got a pot here, two gallon pot. I, I think it's like one and a half gallons, whatever you brew your stews in and things like that. And I got my grains, found the wheat germ, thankfully. I need to crack these open. I don't have a mill. But if I, even if I did have a mill, you guys at home who want to do this probably won't have a mill either. So let's, uh, let's find a way to crush these. What I've decided to do is fill them up in a Ziploc bag and then use a roller to crush them open. What this is going to do is allow the, any sort of grain um, starches and sugars in there to, to be exposed. So then any enzymes that are in there can then convert that into sugar, which then becomes your wort, which is like your pre-beer basically. The issue I'm gonna run into with this is that these raw grains have not been germinated. And what that means is when you germinate malts, you're basically producing enzymes that then break down the stuff inside. So then when you put hot water into it, it, it melts into the water and the enzymes can get into it and they chew that up and eat that up and convert it into sugars that the yeast can then convert into alcohol later on. These have hardly, hardly any enzymes in, it, in them, like none. 
I got wheat germ because I think it does have enzymes. Germ means germination, which means I think these have been germinated. And when it's raw, uh, which is what I think this is, I, I think this brain is raw. I took a stab at that, meaning I hope they didn't kill the um, enzymes in bad packaging. So we'll, we will find out. Either way, I'm probably going to get like a 2% beer out of this, maybe 3%. But it's still going to be beer. It still counts. It still counts. <laughs> You just want to crush this up a little bit and not do like a fine powder. You just want to kind of break everything up. Yeah, so you want everything to look like it's cracked and kind of just exposed open a little bit. I have a scale here. If you don't have a scale, just throw like a handful of this into the recipe. I'm heating a gallon of water up to my two and a quarter pounds of grains. And that should get me to the right levels. The right levels meaning like, I don't want to make this too thin in the water or too thick with the water. That should be about right. I do have a proper thermometer that I could use for this. I'm using meat thermometer instead. Let's say you don't have a proper thermometer. This should be close enough. And heat this water, hot water up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, it's a little warm. Uh, let it cool down for a minute or two and then uh, add the grain. So my target here is around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Somewhere in that range is fine. What this does is in this range, the starches that are available in here, which is probably not a lot, will become uh, soluble. And then the enzymes that are available, which is not that much, and then take that, convert it into sugars, which then the yeast can eat later and convert to alcohol. So if you do somewhere in that range and you're a little off, you know, don't worry about it. I'm just trying to target around 150. That's great. Put the lid on and wait about 30 minutes to 45 minutes and do the next step. It's a good idea to turn this on occasionally and just try and hold it around that uh, temperature. It's been about 45 minutes, the sun has set, we're still making beer. Well, we're trying to make beer right now, but we're really efforting it. The conversion here has been pretty much done. All the enzymes that were in there, hopefully did their work. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna transfer this off the all that grain goo right now with this trainer. Probably better to do this over a sink, let that drain out. Okay, back into here. I'm cheating a little bit. I have what's called a refractometer. You cannot find this at the grocery store. I'm doing this, I wanna see which sugars I have out of this. I don't think there are a lot. It does not feel very sticky at all. So I just wanna see where I'm at. I might just add some sugar to this. Um, so some weird hodgepodge sugar grain sort of solution that could be called beer. I'm not, I don't know yet, I don't know yet. Now the other beers I've made, I roughly know where I'm at, and and based on this reading here, I get a gauge of of how much is going to ferment. So it's very low in the sugars. It's very low, but I did some of it. I got some. I got some. So you have beer. It's sugars in it. It's registered on this thing called a refractometer. In here, it tells you what your starting sugars are, and then as it ferments, those sugars go down and drop down and lower and lower and lower. So pure water read at zero. This is reading at 1.010, which is very low in sugars. The average beer, very average beer, starts around, starts around 1.050. But hey, I got something. And I didn't think it was gonna be that good to begin with. Woo, woo, woo. That right there is called a protein break. Wow. So all the proteins coagulate and come together and form this explosion. So you do have to watch out for this. I turned my back for a second. I looked over and whee! I'm gonna throw the sugar in here. I decided to go with raw agave. This is organic raw agave. Uh, honey will do. Uh, you can probably use corn sugar. Uh, just boosting sugar content a little bit and you're probably not gonna get too many of the flavors of the honey in there because it'll boil out anyway. I'm gonna boil this for 15 minutes. 
So first edition, let's add it now, bay leaves. Bay leaves are, have a lot of oil in it that's very, very similar to some, some hops. And that, for those who care, that's called myrcene. So that's why I chose them. Uh, and uh, in the go. Three bay leaves. Start the timer, 15 minutes. Okay, that agave worked well. I'm at 1.037. That's great. So it's a very like light beer, light alcoholic beer. Uh, and it's gonna have some of that grain into it, obviously the grain profile. Um, and that was 7.5 ounces of agave that I used. So yeah, we're on track. We're doing well. We're doing well right now. We're doing good. All right, there's five minutes left in the boil. I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of coriander. Boop. And I got black tea. Whole leaf black tea. Cut the bags open, let them go in there, let, let, them, let, them, let them fly around in there. And the two tea bags was about 0.25 ounces worth of black tea leaves. The reason why I chose black tea and coriander is because they have oils in it that I think can work well. There's an oil in coriander called linalool. Coriander also has geraniol in it, combined with high excess of linalool converts into citronella, which has like cool citrusy fruity flavors. The Sapporo Brewery in Japan did a study. They, they actually did this and brewed this beer with just coriander compared to actual hops. And it actually, they actually got pretty decent results. Like it actually got some of that fruity citrusy flavor out of it. Crazy. Black tea also has linalool and geraniol. So the forces combined, I'm hoping to get some sort of citrus thing out of this. I'm about to close cool down in 10 seconds because I need to get this to about 70 degrees, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's around the pitching temps for a beer anyway. I don't know what Baker's Z's pitching temps are because it's not really a thing. Probably can go higher than that. Time's up. By the way, by the way, heating up hot water here, I'm gonna rinse all my stuff with really hot water, including the, my glass jug I have. I'm hesitant to use really hot water, but you need to sanitize stuff. And you cannot buy sanitizer at the grocery store. And the sanitizer that does use, that is used for brewing, it's just not readily available at the store. So I'm just going to try a bunch of hot water. Not normally what you would do for brewing beer. But this is grocery store beer. The rules don't apply. So normally for yeast that you would do for dry yeast, you would, it's called rehydrate it. And you sprinkle it in some water here. And you let it kind of bloom and do its thing. I'm going to do the same thing here. Um... This water is sterile because I boiled it for a little bit or I kept it 170. I'm going to eyeball it. I don't know how much to put in. I don't have the over pitch or under pitch for, for, this, for this stuff. We'll find out. Sanitizing my thermometer to, give, to see where I'm at for uh, the finished beer or the wort, I should say. I'm going to kind of like do a little heat thing on this thing. <laughs> All right, do this over the sink. If you don't have a funnel, over the sink is fine. Stir it all around in there. Sanitize this is gonna get, right? Looks to be about half a gallon or so. Um, it feels a little warm to me because I just rinsed this with hot water and that was still at 80 degrees. I'm gonna cool it down for another five minutes, 10 minutes, and then pitch the yeast. So right now you want to swirl it a little bit. You want to get oxygen into this because yeast needs oxygen to grow and metabolize all that good stuff. So I'll give it like a 45 second swirl here. What you want to do with the first five or six days is then throw some tinfoil on it. And then after it looks like it's done fermenting and nothing's shown, uh, like it looks like it stopped bubbling or it's like, wait like a good two weeks. Then you can throw uh, the, screw the cap back on, but like loosely. You don't want oxygen later on in your beer. Early on it needs it. So I'm gonna throw some tinfoil on this. Um, and if you see mold, just throw it out. Any sort of mold growth, it smells like mold, it looks like mold, don't mess with it. Something went wrong, wild bacteria got in that you don't want. That's a bad bacteria. Yeah, we'll see how this turns out. Very interesting experiment. I'll put the recipe in the description below of exactly what I used um, and my process. Uh, and uh, stay tuned for the tasting and the rest of the process.